Thank you and good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm delighted to be here today with you this morning at this uh, important conference for the public sector on the whole issue of uh, accessibility of public services. And I understand you represent a, a range of roles, including access officers, disability liaison officers, equality officers, public service staff who are involved in customer service, in the built environment, information technology, as well as representatives from a number of disability organisations. Um, I'm particularly delighted because the whole issue of accessibility of public services is one that I have a, a long-standing interest in that even kind of predates my time at the Institute of Public Administration. I joined the Institute uh, back in 1986, a long time ago, but before that I spent a number of years working as a transport planner uh, and a number of th those years working for the London Borough of Camden. Uh, and at that time, I remember working closely with what was then the Greater London Council uh, on the whole issue of trying to improve accessibility of uh, public transport services to the citizens of, of London. And I suppose there are a couple of key lessons we were trying to get through at that time that have stuck with me that I think are kind of still pertinent uh, today. One is that although physical access to services is, is important, it's probably not the key issue. The key issue is more around the attitudes and mindset of the uh, policy designers, the service deliverers, the people who are involved in, in generating uh, the services, trying to ensure that accessibility becomes a part of their normal everyday routine of thinking when they're coming up with a new service, when they're changing something, that it's kind of part of the normal practice. Uh, and changing that, that mindset and developing that mindset and culture is, as I say, probably more important than, the, than many of the other issues. The second key lesson was around the whole issue of uh, involving the citizen themselves in the, the design and delivery of, of accessible services and asking two very simple but key questions. Uh, can I help and how can I help? The can I help, uh, first question, do you actually really need any assistance or are things, where, you know, you may, might make an assumption that something is wrong, the, the people using the service don't feel that, they have another problem that they want to address. The question of how can I help, again, not assuming that some tailored solution will address the problem, but what are the ways in which you can really address the, the, the issue from the needs of the citizen themselves. I say those are two key lessons I remember we, we were working on that have stuck with me over the years uh, in terms of this whole area of accessibility of public services. But coming back more to the current situation, the context for which discussions on accessibility of, to public services uh, is taking place is a changing environment for the public service at the moment, as many of you will well know. Back in 2011, uh, Minister Howlin launched a comprehensive public service reform plan uh, that outlined a number of key commitments and actions under a range of central themes, which I think are very pertinent to the issue of accessibility. The themes were placing customer service at the core of everything we do, maximizing new and innovative service delivery channels, radically reducing our costs to drive better value for money, leading, organizing, and working in new ways, and a strong focus on implementation and delivery. And these are all very fine, obviously, and very laudable uh, themes and objectives to achieve. Um, as we all know, in reality, the current environment for public services, I think, presents both challenges and opportunities when addressing an issue like accessibility. Challenges in that clearly, clearly uh, in the current situation, the economic environment that we're in, the cost-cutting agenda has a tendency to dominate. And with the next budget just a couple of weeks away now, many hard-pressed organizations and programs will be facing a further round of financial cuts, and that clearly presents 
many difficulties. But I do also believe that it represents a real opportunity to get issues like accessibility more clearly on the agenda. Now, why do I, why do I say that? Because I think services are changing so much at the moment because of the way they're being squeezed uh, that you know this mantra of doing more with less just can't hold uh, any longer. That really it's a way of thinking about ways of doing things differently, new ways of delivering services. People are perhaps more open to thinking about different ways of providing services than they were in the past because they've been kind of forced out of uh, the, the, the comfortable environment and we're living in a very difficult environment where thinking about new ways of delivering and of designing services is crucial. And if we can get the accessibility agenda into that at the beginning of the process, I think that opens up new, new opportunities. So things like uh, engaging citizens, co-design, co-production, co-delivery of services that maybe wouldn't have been on the public service reform agenda a number of years ago, I think may, there may be opportunities to develop that further at the current time. So the current environment I would see as one as both providing challenges, but also providing uh, opportunities. And that as public spending is, is cut back and stability is returned to public expenditure, there's clearly a need to maintain public services that many citizens uh, rely on and to ensure that we keep equality at the core of our public services. And by understanding the needs of as many citizens as possible and their wide range of abilities by designing our services to be as accessible as possible, you can deliver better services that meet the needs of all citizens. And hopefully, this conference will give us some thoughts on, on how to do that. I just want to maybe emphasize a couple of things coming from the conference that you've all mentioned that kind of struck me as by being particularly important in today's uh, sessions. I think the lessons we can learn from the UK Cabinet Office Government Digital Services experience uh, is a, a very helpful and timely one. Uh, their aim is to deliver world-class public services in many areas. I'll let you, them tell you to what extent they feel they're, they're, they're achieving that uh, laudable aim. I think that's particularly true, as you've all mentioned, of the gov.uk website and their assisted digital concept that was mentioned. And I think this whole area of the digital revolution in public services is one of these examples where there is an opportunity to enhance accessibility uh, for, of public services for all citizens, and one that we really need to get a grip of. So I think it'd be very useful to learn from, from that experience. Similarly, the, the semi-state sector here, uh, voluntary organizations, other sectors, are beginning to ensure efficient and equal services for their citizens and customers through universal design principles, that emphasise feedback from the customer, the, the issue I was talking about earlier in terms of consultation, and recognising best practices that acknowledge the many differences in size, age and ability. Siobhan also mentioned the issue of public procurement. And at first sight, you might think, well, what is an issue like procurement to do with uh, accessibility? But when you think about the tremendous buying power of governments, Procurement can be used to drive social change by leading the market to produce goods and services that more citizens can benefit from, leading to a more inclusive public sector and a more capable private sector. So something that's going on at the moment in terms of reform that can clearly make a big difference. And the Office of the Ombudsman, again, as Siobhan mentioned, clearly in terms of providing a voice for the citizen, articulating that voice is a, a, an important role and one that can be evolved and developed further. Um, if just in making a couple of final comments, I can put in a plug wearing one of my other hats as chair of the Irish Valuation Network for the important role of monitoring and evaluation uh, and building that in from the beginning of any new initiatives. Often evaluation is thought of at the end, we'll say, well, let's try and evaluate what we did. 
which you can learn some lessons from, but it's always more useful and you learn much more if you build monitoring and evaluation in right from the beginning of the process. In terms of these initiatives that we bring in, have they really made a difference in terms of accessibility to the citizens it's meant to serve? And, and I can just put in a plea to consider that in, in the deliberations. Um, having said that, I think the conference itself will hopefully allow us to increase our understanding, improve our skills, so that we can focus on making the, the most of our resources to deliver public services that we, we can be proud of. And I'm looking forward to hearing the deliberations from the panel this morning. I wish you all a very enjoyable and productive conference. Thank you.